Hello everybody, today we will talk, be talking about the sensors in FTC and what they are used for. The first sensor we will be talking about is the color sensor. It uses a built-in IR proximity sensor and white LED for active target lighting. The sensor detects the light reflected back from the detection object with a receiver. Based on the light intensity, the color bed can be determined. So what can it be used for? Well, some applications can be that it move, moves across a field based on a certain color. So for example, it could follow a blue tape on a field or a red tape. Robots can also use to detect an object of a certain color and verify if it is that color and could do certain actions based on the color. The next is the REV blinking LED driver. It is a compact LED driver module that controls 12V RGB LED and 5V LED strips, combines internal LED drivers, a 5V power source, and a pre-programmed controller. You can use pulse width modulation pulse to control color patterns. It's not a really a sensor, but it's still important for FTC because it is useful to show different stages or steps of a robot. So for example, in the FTC challenge, it can use lights around the robot to display which state a robot is in. For example, autonomous, teleop, or endgame. It can also be used to test a robot and show different colors for different actions. The next sensor is the touch sensor. It is a Digini's digital sensor with a binary output. So when the button is not pressed, the LED will be not lit and has high voltage. And when the button is pressed, the LED will light up and will have low voltage. So it is best used for user input and can be also used as a limit switch, which we'll be discussing over the next slide. So humans can, can use it to start the robot. It could also be used to limit how much a mechanical arm rotates down. If arm, the arm touches a switch, it can send a signal to seize rotation. It could also sense whether a robot hits something. So the next sensor is a lim limit switch, which is similar to a touch sensor. It is a digital sensor that has a three-sided digital hall effect switch. There are triggers on the top and two on the side. Any can be reported to be triggered. Its REV magnetic limit switch detects magnetic fields. So essentially it's a more triggerable touch switch if you want it to be more sensitive. So what can it be used for? Well, it's similar to the touch sensor applications. It is used for controlling machinery as a part of a control system. So for example, it could limit a robot arm from going past a certain object. It can also be used to count objects that touch it. So the next sensor is a potentiometer. It's an analog sensor with a 270 degree range of motion. It works by converting the angular position of a shaft into an analog voltage signal. It detects how much rotational motion is the current mechanism. So it can also be used to limit how much an axle rotates. If you have a robot arm, you can rotate it until it rotates 90 degrees. And it can also be used to make sure it stops at that point. So it's more accurate than measuring angles using time. The next few sensors we will be discussing have to do with distance. So the first is the distance sensor. It can output certain signals such as laser, infrared LED, or ultrasonic, and read the distance based on its output. So the REV 2 meter distance sensor uses laser ranging to measure distances up to 2 meters within millimeter resolution. So its applications are used to identify objects that are directly in front of it. And you could also use this to stop at a certain distance from a wall or an object at close range. It could also be slightly inaccurate. The next sensor is the encoder. It has a light source, a disk with dark lines or ticks, a photo detector, circuit board, and wire. And as a motor rotates, line pass in front of a light source and the photo detector counts ticks. We can use these ticks to count. We can use encoders to power motor until the amount of ticks or inches are achieved. So it's used to limit how far your robot moves. For example, you can use encoders to stop after moving the 10 inches or 10 centimeters. It could also be used to measure how long you travel. For example, you could drive forward to 10 seconds and see how many inches or ticks the encoder counts. The, the bad thing about it is it could be slightly inaccurate as it only measures after full rotations. So if your wheel moves full 10 rotations and then half a rotation, then encoders will only be able to count the full 10 rotations. The next sensor we'll be talking about is odometers, which are slightly more accurate than encoders. So it has an encoder, casing, and an omni wheel. Encoders capture movement and readings, determine displacement from starting position and current location. It also creates a coordinate plane, and using these three allows for finding a horizontal location, vertical location, and heading, also known as its angle. So its applications is that it's useful for robot navigation. It's more accurate than encoders and can use to make a robot move and rotate to certain coordinate positions on the field. 
It can measure distance like encoder and also measures heading. It's normally also used with an IMU, which we'll be discussing next. This is the IMU, or an inertial measurement unit. It detects linear acceleration using accelerometers and gyroscopes. Essentially, it keeps track of the angle of the robot, and it sometimes includes a magnometers for angle reference. IMUs keep track of the angle of your robot on a field. This is also very helpful as you can turn your robot until it is at a certain angle. So like, like for example, you could turn your robot like 45 degrees or 90 degrees and make it stop. It's used for odometers and encoders for field navigation and knowing exactly where your robot's on the field and what it's heading. The last sensor we'll be talking about is SLAM or the Intel RealSense T265 camera. So SLAM stands for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. It is basically used for creating a virtual map that the robot used to navigate in an environment or field. It has V-SLAM technology, visual inertial odometry SLAM algorithms, fisheye camera lenses, and an IMU and USB port. So what is it used for? Well, it's mainly used for autonomous navigation because that's the period where the humans can't control the robot at all and the robot has to make its own decisions. So it's used in car piloting, automatic robot navigation on a field, RFDC team used SLAM to autonomously pick up objects, for example, rings that fell on the floor by generating pathing to pick them up. Um, thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe.